Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be about how to vectorize watercolors in Illustrator. That is, you should have already scanned your watercolor images and removed the background in Photoshop. If you don't know how to do that, don't worry. I'm going to put up a video soon about how to digitize your watercolor in Photoshop. Okay, so let's just get started. Open up your Illustrator and let's create a new file. Click on create new. Let's make this 12 into 12 inches and then RGB color mode and 300 ppi and click create. If you're going to print this, make sure it's in a CMYK. So there are two ways in which you can bring in your image in here. One is to just go to your folder where you have your image. Uh, this is one of the designs that I used for my recent Redbubble update. You can just click on this and drag and paste it into the artboard. But the problem is it will paste it as a huge file, like the actual file size. But you can reduce it by holding your shift key down and dragging it. But we don't want to use this method, so I'm just going to delete it. The another option is by going to File, Place. And you can go select the file that you want and click on Place. Now you get this uh, nice anchor point. You can just click and drag to place it. Click outside and you're done. So now it's time to vectorize this one. If you scroll in and zoom in, you can see this is kind of a, this is a raster image. It's time we go ahead and vectorize it. So go to window and then image trace. So you find this box right here. So if this is grayed out, just make sure you click on the image and then it will become all right. So let's go ahead and check out the preset. And now I'm going to select high fidelity photo and it gives you a warning that it's going to take a lot of time because of the large image. We know that click OK. So once you click OK, it starts its job. And then this usually takes up a lot of time depending on the size of your image. So make sure that uh, you don't use a considerably huge image here because what happens is your illustrator might hang if you don't have a very high performing computer. So it has vectorized this image right now. If you scroll back in, it looks exactly like that. But if you zoom in, you can see that all these tiny patches that it has formed. So if you're happy with this, you can stop here, but you can actually make modifications for the modifications. So let's click on advanced and you can see different things here. That's parts, corners, noise. And then here you can see the actual numbers. And then you can see something called as colors, which is 7763. So we're just going to go ahead and increase the colors here by a little bit. Let's make it 90 and click enter. The thing about colors is if you want more colors to be picked up during this vectorization process, this is where you go ahead and change it. So let's just see and see if it makes any difference. Sometimes you don't see those subtle changes, but it makes your vector images much more like have more depth. Okay, you can see the colors change considerably. Let's go ahead and change the path and see what happens. It's set to 50%, so I'll just make it 60. Okay, so make sure one thing is make sure that your preview is switched on here. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see a lot of things that's happening. Okay, I'm completely happy with what happened. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and click on expand. But to do that, let's just zoom in here and click on expand. So as you can see, you can all the parts are right here. And if you move this a little bit slightly, you can see it has a whitish background now. It's not transparent anymore, but we're going to fix that. Okay, close this trace image thing. And now we're going to remove this rectangle box right here. Go to your direct selection tool or you can press A on your keyboard and then click on this rectangle box and press delete. And now if you go back to your selection tool and click and drag this one, you can see it's transparent, right? Let's go back. Now it's time to uh, go ahead and check our vector and make sure there are no gaps or anything in it. So let's just scroll in. Okay, so you might see some gaps like this uh, when you're trying to work with these vectors. It's easy to fix. One simple and easy technique is to use a pencil tool. So I'm just going to click on this, double click on this because you want it to go into isolation mode because everything is grouped right now and you don't want to ungroup it. So go to in, in, into isolation mode by double clicking on it and then you can select this. And now I'll go to my pencil tool. If you cannot see it here, right click and then pencil tool. And then I'm going to take one end and join the other end. 
and that's it. And to go out of the isolation mode, you can just press this arrow here and go back to the group. So you can just go ahead and check all the gaps that you have and try to fill them out. Sometimes it's okay to have these gaps because you really don't care about these gaps, but sometimes you really want to get rid of them. That's one thing to edit your vector image. The next step is to make sure that there are no extra um, things hanging around your artwork like sometimes there'll be things like you know they might have been something like this and you know let's give it a color and yeah a drop of watercolor which fell around right next to you or something like that and it gets picked up so if you want to delete it just go to your direct selection tool or your selection tool just click on it and delete it and you can do the same thing when it comes to these edges as I can see, there's nothing, uh, there's no white spaces or anything here that I really want to delete. It seems to be fine. But if you want, you can just click on these tiny things, double click on it to go into isolation mode and then click delete and it'll just remove that. So it's a bit of manual work that you have to do if you want your artwork to be perfect. But otherwise, this seems perfectly fine. So I'll just go back to my main image. Now we'll save this as an Illustrator file also export it as a PNG file to use in our different projects. So you can do that by going to File, Export and Export As. And then you can do PNG. I'll just say Vectorbox because I have so many out there. And then PNG. You don't have to give Artboard here. If you give Artboard, it's going to take... I'll just show you what happens. When I say, click on ex Export, so you can see all the uh, stuff here and what happens. So let's cancel it. So file, export, export as, PNG, uh, Vectorbox, and then export. So you can see it'll just export that area. So when you're trying to put this on your products or something, it does not take up a whole lot of space, but it just takes up how much is necessary. And let's make this a 300 PPI because we want really high resolution when you're especially putting it on print on demand sites and stuff like that and click OK and make sure it's set to transparent. You don't want a white background. Click OK. All right, let's go check our file. So this is the vector bug that we just created. Let me open that. And now I'll side by side open our raster image or OK. There you go. These are the two things that you see right now and they look quite similar. There's not much of a difference in them except that you might have fixed the white spaces extra in your vector image. So yes, this is basically how you convert a watercolor image into a vector format to use on your projects. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and um, let me know if you want to learn something and if I can help you out in some way. And do follow me on Instagram and everywhere else. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.